Hi everyone, Nigel Saunders here. Today I'm going to be doing some more pruning work on my Scots Pine. I picked this Scots Pine not because it was the perfect tree for this pot that Shani made, but because it was the closest tree that I had that would look good in this pot someday. So my idea is to grow out the tree to eventually fit and match the pot nicely. I started the pruning work this spring taking some of the branches back but I didn't want to take off too much at once or you risk killing off some of these developing buds. So now that some of these back buds are getting stronger I can take the tree back even further. I eventually want this tree to kind of look in harmony with the pot and maybe a tree that's growing on a mountain that if it gets too tall the snow sliding down the mountain breaks off the top and it's always kind of kept short and close to the terrain. So I kind of want the tree to kind of grow around the rock. That's my idea anyway. And I've kind of got that with the front branch here that it kind of grows down and around the rock. I initially, I was going to prune it off shorter to show more of the rock here. I may still do that, but I kind of like that effect that, uh, you know, the branches will kind of hug the pot and follow the terrain of the pot. So I'll kind of go with that theme. I think that'll suit this really nicely. I'll get the pot and the tree on my spinning tree bonsai turntable and I can begin the pruning. I'm going to start by looking at this branch that's coming out the front and I'll turn it around so you can see it from the side view. So you can see this lowest branch I like and then above it I have another branch that's kind of overhanging it, putting this lower branch in the shade. So I want to reduce this branch back or possibly take it right off because I have, well, if I go back to this view, you can see I have this lowest branch and then above it I have another branch and then I have another branch here depending where my apex is so it's kind of like ladder branches one above the other and they all shade each other out so I've got to decide what I'm going to do the one up here is quite thick it's about the same thickness as this branch above it these two lower branches here are very strange they kind of come out from the trunk and then they spread each direction they're not a typical pine branch. It doesn't really flow in with the design, but it may suit this style that's going to be compressed down by snow and avalanches. And It's also kind of coming straight out towards the viewer, which is another strange thing. But uh, again, this isn't going to be a normal pine. It's not going to be your typical pine styling. So I've got to decide about this branch here, whether I want to keep it, reduce it. I definitely have to reduce it if I want to keep this part of the branch in the sun. And it is quite thick compared to all the other branches. Everything tells me I should take it off. I've got all these nice fine branches around this area and that's the only big thick one and I have a better branch up here. So I'm going to take that one off. Now I've got to decide, well, I'm going to cut it back to a stub and make dead wood out of it. Good possibility on this tree because it will eventually have a lot of dead wood. So I think I will. I think I'll leave a bit for dead wood to about here and off it comes, just like that. I think it looks a lot better now. You can see this lower branch here. I'm thinking about the dead wood. I don't really like the dead wood hanging down in front of this branch. I think it would look better and cleaner without that. I'm going to remove it. Some dead wood looks good. I don't think this does. Okay, that's cleaned out. Let me have a look. Oh yeah, that looks much better without it. A lot cleaner in that area. Okay, so I like this little branch here. I think it's really nice. I like this lowest branch. It maybe is hanging a little low. You know, maybe I can cut it back some. So 
This is last year's needles, these darker green ones. The ones that are falling off here are from the year before. And then I've got the light green needles at the tip. So it is possible I could prune it back into the last year's needles and I may get some shoots coming out in this area. The danger is, is that this is a cascade branch, which is usually weaker. The branches that grow more upright generally are stronger on pines. So it would be quite risky to cut it back into old needles. I may not, it may just die back. I'm probably, now that this is getting light, it'll get stronger, this lower branch, and I'll probably get some back buds eventually, and then I can prune it off. So I think I'd better leave it alone for now. So my next area, I'll show you a close-up of this area here. Here's a view kind of looking up at that area. So I've got two strong branches that fork here. One kind of going off to the left-hand side, one coming out the front. I've got this hanging branch, which makes three branches in this area. One on the inside here that makes four, and then one on the top here, which makes five. So there's five branches coming from one area on the tree. And if I let them all develop, I'll probably get quite a serious bulge in this area. It'll swell up because of the vigor. So I'm definitely going to take out some branches and I gotta decide which ones. I want to keep this one up top for sure because that's a good potential apex for the tree. I don't like the one that's hanging down to this side um, because I have a nicer hanging branch here. So I'm going to remove this one. So here I go. Like that. That cleans that lower area up really nicely. So now let's go up to this branch up here and see what's going on there. Here's a view looking down at that section. So you can see my trunk line comes out here, divides into two, and then I've got this other potential apex developing here and my hanging branch down below. So it's a little strange looking because I have so many branches still in this area but I think in future some of them will get removed. This one that comes out front here, again, it's, it's quite long and I can shorten it back. I've got some good shoots back here, so I'm going to do that. I, I want to get as much light to these lower cascading branches as I can. So I think I'm going to take off this branch right here. And I'll just confirm it in the front view before I cut. Yes, I think that's a good decision. So here I go, like that. So now I have like a vertical type apex. I've got two branches that go off to the side here. This one is kind of on the inside of a curve. It could become my potential apex if I shorten the branch even back further. I'm getting a nice twisty branch there. This branch underneath could be removed. That one out front and keeping this one. But again, I have that kind of branch on the inside of a curve here, which always looks a little strange. It's I do kind of like the idea of shortening this branch right back to this one, and then I'm sure something else will develop that I can continue the flow of that branch. Let me look in the front view. It's a tough decision. I, I, I have that big cut underneath where I remove that other large branch. And I think if I do too much cutting in this area, it may not be good for that branch. It may be too much at once. Maybe I've got to resolve what I'm going to do with these two branches here and all these branches first. Let me go back to the front view. Here's a front view of the tree. And the more I look at it, the less I really like this big thick branch here. I think it's better to develop this branch and the finer ones out front into a sort of a crown on the tree. I think this one is just too thick. It competes with the main trunk line. 
I think. Let me have another look. It also, this trunk climbs up, and from the front view, this one just sort of blends in. It's hidden behind the trunk line. So it may not be the best. When I cover it up with my hand, you don't miss this branch at all. So it's not an important branch. So I think I'm going to remove it. That would clean up this area. So instead of, you know, having one, two, three, four branches coming from that area, I'll have three. And in future, if this becomes the main apex, it'll come up. This will be the apex. And coming off of there, I'll have two branches. So I don't know. Always tough decisions when you're pruning bonsai. And again, there's no right or wrong. It's just what appeals to you. Once I remove this branch, it's gone. Okay, I'm going to take it off. I, I don't like it. So, here I go. I'm gonna leave a bit of a stump. I can always clean it up later. Here I go. It's gone. How does it look? Well, the tree looks more compact over this side. So the next branch I want to deal with is this big, thick one that winds up here. It's a bit of a problem because it it splits your attention from the kind of main part of the trunk line and the tree. And then they have a second distraction over this side. Now, I don't want to get rid of it because it kind of hugs the terrain but perhaps I want to shorten it and clean it up. You can see there's duplicate branches, one above the other here. So I think I want to reduce this back. I've got a good branch here. Now, if I took the whole top off, all I've got is this branch, which may not be enough. I could keep this lower branch here and move the upper one. I think that might be a good place to start. It's not the most flowing lines in the world, but you can see the bulge here. This is kind of the bulge you get when you get too many branches growing in one area. So I had another one up here that I pruned in spring. So that was four branches growing in one area and you can see the ball shaped kind of bulge forming there. So that's why we try and clean out the structure on your bone size to avoid this happening. So I'm definitely gonna take off that top branch, keeping my lower one. Yeah, so here I go. Here it goes gone. I got to clean up that area and I, I haven't decided about this top branch yet. Let me have a look at that. Yeah. The more I look at this upper part of this branch, the more I don't like it. If I removed it, here's what it would look like. It still looks okay. I think I've got to get rid of that. So here I go. There's a big cut. Okay, gone. Out this side of the tree now, I've got the same thing. I've got, you know, one branch up here that's kind of shading out the branch below. I like both branches, so I think I've just got to reduce this one back. So this branch, divide from one to two here. So I'm going to take off the extension here, taking it back like that. That gives lots of light to this branch, keeps a nice tiered structure in this area, kind of an apex, first branch, second branch. Looks quite good, I think.
Here's a look at the tree now from the front. It's kind of an unusual tree because it has this branch here that kind of crosses the trunk line. But then again, this isn't a usual tree. This is going to be a fairly unusual looking tree in the future. I think it's made a lot of improvements today. I think the form is slowly developing out of all that chaos. Yeah, it's got a long way to go, but I think there's something happening here and I think it's looking good. I do like the fact that this sort of flat top here matches the angle of the stone or the uh, pot, Shani's pot. I think that's cool. This branch and this branch also match that angle of the pot. This branch up here kind of matches the angle of the pot. And the one that goes straight down here matches the angle of the trunk. So everything's very... I don't know, it, it's very uniform. It, it has a style to it that's, I think, quite unique. And I think it's just going to look better and better in the future. Especially if I kind of keep that, you know, 90 degree style to it. I don't know if that's a style, but sort of that branch structure where everything's kind of... This isn't a very flowing tree. It's very abrupt and that's... An abrupt tree like that gives me the feeling of trauma. <laughs> that something happened to the top of the tree. It maybe got sheared off. Um, that, you know, everything can only grow in certain directions and there's a reason for that. And I think... The tree implies that feeling. I mean, it's far from being perfected. There's still a lot of design work to go in the tree and growing, growing, pruning, and growing and pruning. But there's something there. Like I said, I think there's something positive happening with the whole composition. So my last thing I'm going to do today is I'm going to clean it all up. I've got weeds in here. I've got some brown needles on the tree. Just do a general cleanup. In here, you'll see my dreaded liverwort that I gotta pick out. The ducks like it, actually. And I've got my Irish moss or star weed there. Let's see if I can get that out in one piece. There we go. Look at the roots on it. Yeah, quite a bit of weeding to go on this. Got the roots out of that one. So I'll just work away, picking away at all the weeds and get it cleaned up. So July 4th, we have a big road trip coming up with Connor. We're going rock collecting. We're going visiting some nurseries. It's going to be an exciting road trip. I'm really looking forward to it. I've removed all the weeds from the soil. It's quite dry in here. I'm going to give the tree a water. All right, here I go with the water. And this water has a bit of fertilizer in it. Just a very, very small amount. So I'll have to soak this several times, let it soak in, water it again. When it dries out, it takes a few applications of water before it starts soaking into the soil. Okay, so that's good. That's taking the water really nicely now. It's soaking right in. Here's a look at the branches that I took off today. Let's have a final look at the tree now. I'll spin it around. You can see it from all angles. I think if you had given this pot and this tree to a hundred different people, you'd get a hundred different designs in the end. Each person would do something different. So I'll spin the tree around now so you can see it from all angles. Here I go. So a lot of growth to come out the back side still.
I'm back somewhere to the front. Somewhere around here. <laughs> Let's head into the greenhouse now and there's a few updates on the seeds and seedlings to show you. So in here, just yesterday, an almond came up. Remember those bitter almonds I planted? Oh, well, there's one growing right in there, so that's exciting. So I got two pines and an almond. The uh, baobabs that I planted yesterday have gotten a little taller. They're looking good. They'll need another watering soon. Um, I also noticed, remember the baobabs? I had them in this cloth, this damp cloth. Well, I noticed yesterday there's another one. See the big thick root coming out of it? So that's one more germinating. I'll keep my eyes on the others. Maybe more will come too in the future. So that's another one I can plant very soon. So that's good. That's very exciting. You might notice I have all my succulents back in the greenhouse. We got rain last night. It uh, rained a few times this morning just lightly, but I'm keeping them all in here because I just seem to be running in and out of the greenhouse all the time, taking my succulents out on a nice sunny day. And then a couple hours later, it starts clouding over and rains. I bring them all back in. The sun comes out again, I bring them out and then it clouds over and rains again. So yeah, so I'm just leaving them indoors for today. And it's quite cool out today. We have a high of 22 degrees Celsius and a low of, I think, 12 degrees Celsius tonight, which is pretty cool for summer. I moved my tray of sequoia seedlings outside. I noticed there was a few that were kind of damping off. They were kind of rotting and tipping over. So I thought maybe, you know, some sunlight, full sunshine, uh, a nice breeze blowing by them will help them survive. And so they, they're looking good so far, the ones that are growing strongly. So they could use a water soon too. But yeah, doing well. Hi, hello. <laughs> oh, what's going on there? Hey, what's going on there? Oh, <laughs> hi, hello. It's okay, <laughs> I'll leave you alone. My French lilac down here by the Eiffel Tower. You can see I pruned off a large branch here and I've got a new shoot coming out on there. And up top, all the other buds are swelling, so they'll be coming out soon. So hopefully, you know, by the end of summer, it'll look a little less stick-like and more like a tree. The lychee tree that Zin from the YouTube channel Maybe Bonsai gave me is doing really well. Growing right nicely, getting a couple of branches up top. Awesome. I took some small steps forward for the Scots pine that's planted in Shani's bonsai pot. I think it's uh, showing some design promise for the first time since I planted the tree. And that's all for today. I'm Nigel Saunders. Thanks for joining me in the bonsai zone. Mm -hmm.